Hello and welcome back. So today I hope to conclude our discussion on um, stock valuation. Um, this time we're going to deal with a certain type of valuation called the non-constant growth. Um, last time we were doing zero growth and constant growth. This is the non-constant growth. Non-constant, or what we would also call supernormal. Um, in the previous videos we're speaking about zero growth or constant growth that would be considered or rather the, the one with constant growth would be considered a normal growth um, problem so this is non-constant or super normal growth stock valuation and this is really the trickiest it gets uh, in terms of when it comes to the exam um, it's not very straight um, it's really, really important to understand this concept actually because it comes up a lot in interviews when you're dealing with discounted cash flow analysis. Um, but you'll probably get to that in more advanced finance classes. Um, for now, let's just have a look at what this means. So, usually, um, let's just kind of draw an axis here. Um, so, let's just say this is time and this is um, growth or a growth rate so usually when a company is starting off let's just say year zero one two three you know all the way to let's say year five and then onwards so a company for the first few years grows exponentially we hope um, so their growth rate is you know it's kind of going up like this um, and that's probably what Coca-Cola looked like on Procter and Gamble and Johnson and Johnson in their early years. They were growing like this, but then eventually, um, let's just say that's year four. Eventually, you hit year five and you level out. This doesn't mean the company isn't growing anymore. It is growing. It's just growing at a lower rate. Um, that's why I actually should probably write in here rate. This is the rate of growth. Um, so, you know, in the first year it was growing at, let's say, you know. 3% and then in year 2 it was growing at 5% and year 3 it was growing at 6% you know so you're seeing increases in growth every single year until eventually you hit um, you know you hit year 5 or whatever which is what we refer to as the horizon um, the horizon volume this is where the horizon value of the company is calculated, or it's also sometimes referred to as the terminal year, um, which is basically where a company has finished doing its super, super normal growth and it kind of flattens out, let's say, about at 5% um, forever. So it grows at 3%, then 5%, then 6%, and then flattens out at 5%, and we assume it just grows at 5% forever, um, which is a very, actually, that's a very bullish kind of estimate. Usually, when we think about uh, the horizon value of the terminal year, using this um, this growth model um, to project growth out, we usually use inflation because we assume that the company can at least grow um, you know, at the rate of inflation. That would be a lot more conservative in terms of our estimate, but this is the general idea of, of, um, of stock valuation. And it's actually a lot more realistic than the constant growth model because which stock really grows constantly every single year at the same rate? They don't really. Every, every single stock is kind of super normal. You know, in a, in a, a company's early years, they'll have really good growth rates, um, and then later on, you know, they'll they'll kind of flatten out. So this is um, a much more realistic way to to think about stock valuation. Um, so let's begin. Um, let's begin by doing a problem. Um, let's begin by doing a problem. So, uh, for example, let's say um, that a company has just paid. So. Let's do let's write a problem. Company has just paid um, dividend of two twenty a share. Two twenty per share. So that's our first tidbit of information. Um, the dividend will increase by three percent will increase by 3% for the next 
for the next two years. Another tidbit of information. So that's kind of you know if we if we go back up to our little chart over here, that means that it's growing by three percent. You know, for the next couple of years, like over here, this would be flattened out at three. Um, and then after it grows by three percent for the next two years, it will increase by one point five percent. Um it will increase by 1.5% thereafter, which is oops, uh, a much better uh, a much better estimate of, uh, of how much it will grow, because it's a little more conservative. 1.5% is, is roughly you know, around the... Um, it's a little bit higher than our current inflation rate. Uh, current inflation is about 1.1%, so 1.5% is, you know, hovering around the inflation rate, so this makes a lot more sense. Let's just try and uh, draw this, um, just to represent it graphically, or, you know, just like we did above. Um, so, you know, over the next two years, it's going to be growing at 3%, and then, once it hits the uh, second year, it's going to start growing at 1.5%, 1.5, so it's going to fall to 1.5, and then just count growing 1.5% thereafter. So this over here, right here, is where we determine our horizon value, and that's kind of, you know, it's called the horizon value because that's when uh, the company hits its horizon, you know, it's kind of looking out over the horizon, um, into the future and saying, you know, we've had our great years of growing at 3%, but we've got to face the fact that we've we've had a couple of great years and we're going to start growing at 1.5% only indefinitely. So that's us standing here kind of looking out into the future. Um, and the whole idea of the stock valuation is to try and bring back all this growth back to, back to year zero because that's the sweet spot right there, that's the present value. Um, so how do we go about doing this? So let's begin by analysing what we were given. The problem said that we were just paid a dividend of 2.20 per share. Just paid. This is past tense, so that means that this is D0. Yes, you should be calling this yourself now. So we know that D0 is 2.20. Now we know it's growing by 3% for the next two years, and then after that's grown by 1.5%. So how do we go around doing that? Well, the idea over here is that because the dividend is not growing constant, um, doesn't have constant growth, the idea over here is that we need to calculate it manually. And that means that we need to calculate D1 and D2 because they're going, because they're going to be different, obviously. Um, so D1 is going to be 220 times 1 plus G. Now, what's the G? What's this, the growth rate in, D, in, in year 1? Well, we know that it increases by 3% in that year, so it's going to be 1 plus 3 percent. And that comes out to 227, if we round up. Okay. Now, D2, i.e. the dividend in year 2, well, that's going to continue to grow at 3 percent again. Um, so either what we could do here is we could take 227 and multiply that again by 1 plus 3 percent, Which actually gives us two thirty-three. Um, alternatively, you can also think about this as instead of doing d one times one plus g in order to get d two, we can actually do d zero times one plus g squared because it's still growing at a constant rate over here. It's growing at three percent constantly for these two years. So you can also kind of think about it like that. Try doing it this way, you'll see that it comes out to the same thing, 233. Now, this is where it starts getting a little bit more tricky than previously. Or, yeah, I guess a little bit more tricky. Now, D3 is not really the dividend that it's paying out in, in year 3, but it's actually 
we have to think about the price of the company now, looking from year three out on onwards into infinity, um, because at this point it switches to constant growth, um, which actually makes life a little bit easier for us, because we know what the constant growth formula is. And the constant growth formula is going to be used here again. So we know we're growing at 1.5% thereafter, and we know that we had 233 from the last period. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our 233 from the last period, multiply it by 1 plus g, where g is our uh, growth rate. And we're going to divide all of that through by r minus g. Um, r, oops, I haven't put one down yet. Um, <coughs> sorry, let's have an r of 12%. The question, the question would have said, you know, the discount rate is 12%. Um, so 12% minus g, and you know, it's 1.5%. Now what this is doing is it's calculating our horizon value, which is basically the present value of all the dividends from year 3 out into infinity, but not the present value in year 0, the present value over here, at the point where it switches from super normal growth to constant growth. So over here, this is our, our super normal. and this is where it switches to constant again. So, let's calculate this. And something you'll notice about this is it's going to be a lot higher than these because it's actually crunching together all the dividends that are coming into the, in the future forever until infinity, so it's going to be higher than these. Now, if you've done that correctly, that should come out to 22... 52. Um, so that is the horizon value, and this is what we would call the horizon value of the company, which is basically um, standing at this point and looking out into the future and crunching together all the dividends that are coming in year 3, 4, 5, all the way through until infinity, based on the fact that it's just going to grow at this constant rate of 1.5% forever after it had this super normal growth rate in D1 and D2. Um, so how do we go about um, calculating the present value um, of this of this stock? So let's scroll. And let's switch to a different color. Okay, so you're going to use the net present value, um, the NPV function on your calculator. And this is not that difficult to do at all. And it's actually, this, this method is going to be the easiest way. Um, to solve this problem. Um, this is how we do it. Now D0 we don't care about because the present value of anything, um, the present value of any asset is all its future cash flows, so D0 is the is the dividend that it was paid last period. I don't care about that. That doesn't contribute to the, the value of the asset today. The only thing that contributes to the value of the asset today is whatever is coming in the future. So that's D1, D2, and then all these dividends that got crunched together in this calculation to 22.52. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in our cash flow CF1 and that's going to be 227. Our cash flow CF2 in our second year is going to be 233. Now this is the clincher right here. You probably think it's intuitive to take this over here and put it into a third cash flow, but you don't. You add this 22.52, i.e. this whole formula which calculated the horizon value, you add it to the last year of supernormal growth. And this is true for every single problem you're going to do. And that comes out to 24.85. And now you proceed to put in your R, or I, or whatever it is in your calculator, um, probably I, as 12%, and then you just compute the net present value, and if you've done that correctly, the net present value will be, and that's going to come out to 2183.